I'm William Robinson. I'm a painter. Um, my career has been mainly concerned with the landscape. But now uh, I paint mainly my garden, still lives, and some subjects that belong to my past. They're all valid and inclusive in what I do. I wasn't always a landscape painter. My first paintings uh, of any significance are interiors of our family life. My wife doing the housework, the children around us, ordinary suburban houses in Brisbane. But then, in 1970, we bought a small farm and my farmyards started about uh, possibly eight years or so after we bought the farm because with the accumulation of animals I had to learn how to put all of these things in a picture. That is, for example, a small chook and a very large cow in the same picture can produce some compositional problems. Shirley and I are in a lot of paintings of the farmyard. A lot of them are rather romantic in a way, but not Hollywood romance. Rather, well, impossible romances happen. I'm placing us in situations that we only partly ever got into, like chasing animals together or Shirley climbing up a ladder and lying on the roof of a shed, something like that. So it's not normally what she did, but I, in my imagination it's what she does and can do and what we can do together by peeping round a piece of corrugated iron again with each other and looking and saying, boo, something like that. Um, it's just a sense of our story together, which has been a very unlikely story. We didn't expect it to be quite so unlikely. I, the mid-80s, say, uh, we moved more into the landscape. We moved to a property at Beechmont, a very hilly property. I started to find my own way in painting a landscape. Because of the topography, the newness of the landscape, there were no sort of vistas of distance. Everything was sort of close up. You found the landscape, as it were, as you went for a walk. And that's where the multi-perspective comes in. It's rather multi-viewpoint rather than multi-perspective. It's not multi-viewpoint like Cubism, for example, where the artist was searching for a new way to express form by producing different visions superimposed one on the other. This was, as I went for a walk, I would have one vision in front of me, then if I turned and walked up a hill, I would have another one. But it wasn't superimposed. It was added to it. And in doing so, the, la the horizon disappeared virtually from all of my pictures. The horizon did not exist at all. It all really had to do with just this um, dimension of walking in, in this 200 acre property. And then we moved to the seaside and my subject became the seaside with people on the beach. Not just the waves or vistas of the sea, but all of the activities that happened it was something completely new to me. Then it wasn't very long before I acquired a studio at um, Springbrook, which is just behind the Gold Coast. The studio was in rainforest. I used to walk a very short distance to a place called Best of All Lookout, where one got a wonderful vista of uh, Mount Warning. The painting in the National Gallery, creation landscape, fountains of the earth, is really taken from a biblical statement where the waters of the earth are mentioned uh, as part of creation. The rainforest itself is largely made up of canopy and not open spaces like a lot of the Australian landscape. The sunlight filters through 
and the spectrums are formed depending on the air that's inside, whether it's partly um, consisting of mist and clear sunlight or whether the day is dull. But everything in the rainforest is iridescent in one form or another. Not necessarily brilliant colour, but glowing colour. Not, not shining colour, but glowing colour. There's only one small piece of wildlife in it, and that is a very small lyrebird. Lyrebirds are very, very secretive creatures. It's by chance that you come across them in the rainforest. The picture on the right is about the moon and the pull of the moon on the tides. And from Springbrook, of course, you get a wonderful view of the Pacific Ocean. As well as that, of course, there's uh, Gumalara, where I've painted the creek coming down and falling over a waterfall, possibly 1,500 feet, into a creek which will eventually find its way to the sea. The rainforest, which is unlike the dry gum forest of a lot of Australia, has not been painted a lot, and yet it uh, has proved to be one of the most important ecological considerations that we have and, and should be looked after as much as the reef that we have. Many of the trees in some of these places, and certainly uh, in, on Springbrook, are Antarctic beach, which go back to the time of Christ, 2,000 years. Not held by a lot of soil, but the, the trees themselves have that age. Doesn't mean to say that they're very large, they're not huge, but they, are, they do have a sort of, uh, they're twisted by nature and time. They're full of character and they're like old, wise forms of, from some mystic place. The whole of my life with the farmyard pictures and with the landscapes and with the beach pictures, I worked in the studio. I quite often took a little sketchbook out and did drawings, not too uh, descriptive, because if they were too descriptive, it wouldn't leave enough room in my mind to invent the imagination that went behind it. I think I must have a lot of different sort of personalities because I know that some of my landscapes are uh, very moody or moving towards, uh, you know, biblical or spiritual dimensions. But when it comes to humour, which we were talking about, the humour is in the way we lived it our life, the way we left the suburbs and, and found this little sort of uh, community of things. And um, at the time they're very serious, so I wouldn't say the illustrations are what exactly happened, but they are certainly um, the subject of um, matter that doesn't happen to everybody and form a most important part of my life.